Hi everyone, this is Frank from YOLO Live. Welcome back to our channel. We recently rolled out the latest update for the YOLO Box Extreme version 2.0.3. Along with the usual bug fixes, this update also brings several exciting new improvements. Some of the highlights include a complete revamp of the replay feature, saving multiple live stream parameter settings, broader language support, better storage optimization, smoother page interactions, and the addition of safe zone display. Based on feedback from many of our users, this update mainly focuses on enhancing the overall interaction experience while also giving you more precise control over the replay function. Now, let me walk you through all the new features and improvements included in version 2.0.3. We know that many of our users are doing sports live streams or event streams where replay is absolutely essential. Based on your feedback, we've completely rebuilt the replay feature. Now before I walk you through what's new compared to the older version, just a quick note. If you'd like a detailed step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use replay, don't worry. We'll have a dedicated video guide coming very soon. Stay tuned for that. All right, let's dive in. What you're seeing here is the replay main interface in version 2.0.3, where all the new feature buttons are now displayed. If you compare this with earlier versions, you'll notice some big differences right away. First, to better match how our users actually work, we've moved the selected replay source option into the replay settings. Next, we've added replay video speed and optimized the replay list. Two things you didn't have in the old version. These updates make replays much more dynamic and easier to manage. You'll also notice the new tag option inside the replay list. This is a brand new tool. It lets you categorize and organize your replays and quickly find the clips you want. It's very easy to use. For example, if I want to add R1 to tag1, I just tap the star icon next to it. You'll see that the replay count for tag1 increases from 0 to 1. And if I open the tag1 folder, R1 is now there. Of course, you can also create multiple tags, rename them, or delete them in the replay settings. We've also improved the UI and guidance for the replay list. In older versions, replay clips were only shown as plain text, which made navigation and playback confusing and time-consuming. With this redesign, each replay clip is displayed as a thumbnail plus text, and we've added clearer play buttons. At the top right of each replay group, you now see two options, play selected and play all. While one replay group is playing, the others are grayed out so you can't accidentally select them. That covers the updates to the main interface. Now let's take a look at the replay settings. To make things smoother, we've added an on-off switch for replay right inside the settings so you can enable it directly after making adjustments. We've also added show and hide options for the replay control menu at the top as well as for in-out mark and play last. Yes, these are both new features too. The first one lets you customize the clip you want to replay and here's how it works. If you can't predict the exact length of the replay you'll need, simply tap in mark and out mark to set the starting and ending frames of your replay. Then, you'll find that exact clip neatly saved in the replay list on the right. As for the play last function button, it's pretty straightforward. With a single tap, it instantly plays the most recent replay group. Another big upgrade, replay now supports both 2K and 4K resolution for playback and recording. And on top of all that, we've added built-in replay logos, intros, and outros in different styles. Instead of plain text, these are now visual assets, which makes them easier to recognize and manage. We'll also release a dedicated guide on how to use intros and outros effectively. Of course, the YOLO deck has also been updated to keep pace with these changes. The latest version of YOLO deck now supports four replay control buttons. Replay, replay last event, mark in out and capture replay, I'll explain how each of these works in a separate video as well. Before introducing the feature itself, it's worth pointing out that this is another long-awaited update, one that's been requested even more frequently 
than the replay redesign. Version 2.0.3 supports saving multiple live room settings in live events and allows duplicating YOLO cast events. Its logic is simple to use. In the live events list, just tap the three dot icon at the top right of your target live event and you'll see three options, duplicate, reload, and delete. Duplicate creates a new live event that inherits the project from the one being copied. Reload, on the other hand, reloads and reactivates the selected live event. Of course, there are still some details to keep in mind during execution, and we'll release a dedicated video later to help you better understand and master this feature. So, what parameters can be saved in version 2.0.3? To make things clearer, I've listed all of them in one table for easy reference. As you can see, the title, description, and cover image are all preserved when a live event is duplicated or reloaded. Inside the studio, the video source names and order you've set in the previous project are saved, as well as NDI and SRT network stream inputs. Adjustments like cropping, rotation, chroma key, and transitions for each video source are preserved too along with PTZ control parameters, multi-view settings, and configurations for PDF or image playlists. Looking further at the control panel, you'll notice that settings for invite guests, audio mixer, auto switching, background music, scoreboards, replay, recording, platforms, comments, transitions, encoding, and more can now all be saved. This greatly reduces the amount of time and effort you'd otherwise spend fine-tuning before going live. It's important to clarify that the parameters I've just mentioned are saved on a project level, meaning they only apply to that specific project and won't affect others but there are also system-wide parameters that apply across all projects once you make changes. These include overlay parameters like order, naming, position, and size, as well as the tab layout, visibility, and YOLO deck settings. Similarly, video source and overlay layouts fall under global coverage. Other system-level settings include CPU usage display, safe zone frames, video source switching preferences, and HDMI input-output display settings. On the other hand, certain functions that involve toggling, such as NDI out, UVC out, replay on off, and scoreboard on off, are always disabled by default and cannot be saved in an on state. Uh, we'll go into more detail about these parameters and behaviors in an upcoming video, so stay tuned if you'd like a deeper dive into how to make the most out of this new feature. Before the release of version 2.0.3, the internal storage of YOLOBOX wasn't open for direct access. With the new update on YOLOBOX Extreme, the internal storage is now accessible, which means you can finally transfer and store files directly on the device. In many cases, this even reduces the need for an external recording drive. This is especially helpful for users who go live regularly and often need to use the same local video sources or graphic assets. Instead of constantly plugging in and removing SD cards, you can now store those frequently used media files permanently inside the internal storage, saving both time and effort. To access this, go to Account and Settings and Open Storage Management. On this device, I've inserted an SD card, so you can see both internal storage and the SD card displayed here. The internal storage on YOLOBOX Extreme is 216.82 gigabytes, which is more than enough for users with large recording needs. By tapping either internal storage or the SD card, you can view all recorded files or local media files, check their size and date, delete them directly, or even adjust how they're sorted. In addition, if you ever need to format your internal storage or an external storage device, all you have to do now is tap the three dots next to it, then select Format, and that's it. This update also supports file transfers between multiple devices in the extreme. For example, let's say I want to move a video source from the SD card into the internal storage, simply tap the Google Files option in the top right corner and click Open. This brings you into the Google Files main interface. 
Another highlight of this update. At the bottom under All Storage, open the SD card. Here you'll see all your files stored on the card. Find the video you want to move, tap the three dot menu on the right, then select Move to Internal Storage and choose the folder where you want it stored. Once transferred, you'll see the file inside internal storage ready to use it. It's worth noting that when you add locally stored overlays to a live project, these overlays are automatically synced into internal storage, which makes things a lot easier. Of course, this only applies to overlays. If you're adding a local video source in the video source switching panel, it won't automatically sync with storage. And yes, this works not only with SD cards, but also with SSDs. A lot of users have asked for direct file transfer between their computer and Yolobox Extreme. And this is now possible. All you need is a USB data cable. Connect the Extreme's USB-C data port to your computer, then enable file transfer mode on the Extreme. On Windows, your computer will instantly recognize the Extreme's internal storage as an external drive. So you can manage files just like with any other USB device. On Mac, the process is a little different. You'll need to install a free app called OpenMTP. I've linked the download in this uh, video's description. And you can also find it directly on your Yolobox Extreme. Alternatively, you can use a paid app called uh, MacDroid, which works the same way but is a bit more streamlined. With OpenMTP, once you open the app, you'll see a split view. The left panel is your computer's storage, and the right panel is the extreme storage. From here, you can drag and drop files between the two or delete files by selecting them and clicking the trash icon. With MacDroid, once the extreme's internal storage shows up on the list, it will also appear as an external disk on your Mac. Just like any other drive, you can then open it directly and transfer files in or out. This new file transfer feature is a powerful addition, but keep in mind one limitation. Transfers won't work while you're streaming. As soon as you open a live project, the transfer channel is automatically disabled. So if you want to record and simultaneously move your live footage to your computer for editing, you'll still need to rely on an SD card or SSD. In older versions, when we wanted to add images, local videos, PDFs, or audio, the local media library on Yolobox could feel a bit messy. With this update, we've made some optimizations. Now, when I open the local video source option in the video source menu, you'll see four available sources at the top, internal storage, SD card, USB storage, and Yolocast. On the right side, you can choose whether to display items by folders or by files and you can also adjust the sorting order. Once you open any folder and select a target video source, simply tap the navigation button at the top left to return to the previous level. To make sure that visuals and titles don't get cut off around the edges, we've added action safe zones and title safe zones. You'll find the toggle for these in the settings menu. Once enabled, the zones will appear both in the live preview window on the left and when you're previewing overlays, giving you a clear guide for safe placement. At the same time, we've adjusted the default starting positions of built-in overlay presets to better match real-world usage. For example, lower thirds now default closer to the bottom left or aligned with the lower safe zone, while time overlays default near the top right safe zone not only that, we also fixed the issue in previous versions where overlays couldn't be moved to the edges. Finally, we've streamlined the auto switch control panel. In previous versions, because VFA was introduced later, the auto switch interface had an awkward block of empty space. We've now reworked this so that all auto modes and their parameter settings are integrated into a single interface where you can easily switch uh, between different modes using simple option tabs. The new version of Yolobox Extreme now supports a wider range of system languages, including Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, German, French, Japanese, Korean, and Thai. 
USB-C out now supports both 2K and 4K output, and you'll also notice that the frame rate is much more stable. One thing to keep in mind, this 2K and 4K output refers to passive output. In other words, the Yolo Box Extreme itself doesn't let you manually choose between these two resolutions yet. Instead, it automatically matches the resolution based on what your receiving device is set to. So if you select 2K input on the receiving device, the Yolo Box Extreme will output in 2K automatically with, uh, with uh, Haida, and the same goes for 4K. And the CPU usage display in the top right corner has changed from always on to a user controllable option. Lastly, version 2.0.3 of the Yolo Box Extreme now supports camera parameter adjustment for the YoloCam S7 via USB connection. The YoloCam S7 is our AI-powered 4K streaming camera packed with powerful features. If you'd like to learn more about it, check out the link I've included in the description for all the details. At the same time, we've optimized HDMI out for more stable frame intervals when outputting at 50 frames per second. In addition, UVC out now supports lossless YUYV format when streaming in 1080p resolution. Aside from the new features, this update also fixes a number of common bugs. For example, when cropping a video source, fit to screen is now enabled by default. We fixed an issue where video source name changes in HDMI multiview weren't syncing properly and addressed a problem where the main screen refresh rate could drop when outputting at 30 or 25 frames per second. We also resolved cases where HDMI in would disconnect under abnormal conditions and fail to recover. On the network side, we corrected inaccurate status displays for different types of connections and fixed an issue where Wi-Fi could incorrectly report a wrong password when a wired network was already connected. We also took care of several other bugs, including Yolo Deck occasionally disconnecting, black frames appearing when switching video sources, and rare time zone shifts. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more insightful content. If you have any questions or would like to know more about YOLO Live, you can contact us via email at contact at yololive.com. If your need is urgent, you can call us at plus 86 133058 If you need to express your needs through pictures or videos, you can also contact us via WhatsApp. Thank you for watching this video.